Good morning everyone. This morning we have a super nice view. It's a foggy morning here on the Lake of the Fog Colors, so I should be getting some really good shot. I've been waiting but for a full week for this day, so I'm really happy to finally have it. Uh, it's going to be a very calm video where I'm just going to bring you along and show you my point of view of what I'm taking and talk a little bit about uh, the shots that I'm taking along the way. So let's get started by moving a little bit along the lake right here. Okay, so for the first shot right here, we're going to go with something very simple. We have some nice color on the side here and the foggy lake in the front right here. So we're simply going to go here with a wide angle lens and take as much as we can inside of the shot. I think that's looking good. Um, so right now I'm really looking around for anything that can be interesting inside of these shots. We don't see too much of the colors in the background there. Um, so I'm taking for now more some wide shots where you can see a little bit more of all around. Let's go with a little wide shot here on the side. I think I'm going to change right away lenses because I want some detailed shots of the colors in the front that we have right here. So we're going to put this away. Okay, so before I go too far, let me take out the cell phone here. And I might want to take a few little shots right here using my cell phone. So let me take here ultra wide shot here. That's looking good. So the fog right now is disappearing really, really quick. So I really have to try and take as many pictures as I can while I can. So I'm going to go with my 28 to 200 from Tamron. Love this lens. Right now in terms of setting, I'm on aperture priority at f2.8. That's on the white side here. It's going to go to f5.6 on the other end. Um, you want to get as much light right now as possible because even though we might see well with our eyes right now, it's still not a lot for the uh, camera to see around. So right in front of here, there's a little rock and there's nice separation between the rock and the background. So I'm going to see if I can zoom in and just take that rock. So it's still pretty dark. So right now, all the pictures I'm taking, there's still a lot of noise inside of them. That might be a little bit of a problem, uh, but let's just continue going. So I love the pictures here where we can just take some colors through all the mist that we have. My camera's having a hard time with the focus. So I love the separation, the layers that the fog create. That's something that you need to understand. Uh, Fog is very useful inside of photography because it allows to create multiple layers and create much more interesting shots uh, by just removing a lot of the distraction and allowing to concentrate on some parts of the shot. Okay, let's move along. Okay, so we're going to look on the left right here. I'm going to take a little picture with my cell phone so you can see. There's this really nice reflection of the colors at the bottom on the lake that is perfectly calm. And then the fog and then the colors on the top. So I'm going to try and take a few pictures from that. Um, I really like in this case not just taking a wide angle. So I'm going to start with a wider angle shot. Which looks fine. It's not bad. Let's take a second one quickly. But what I really like is just zooming in and taking some details. So really getting those reflections here with the colors. It's looking good. Now I want to try to take a few of just the lake disappearing in the horizon here. I'm a little bit scared. My ISO is really high. So I might go on manual because it does seem to be wanting to go really high for the ISO. So let's bring down the shutter speed to about a hundredth of a second. So let's continue moving. Let's get a little bit closer to the other side here where we can see colors with the fog, the mountain in the background. So we're gonna try and get a few pictures here of this. Looking not bad on this side here. So here I'm going to try and remove 
the top and bottom of the top of the mountain I mean not the bottom and the bottom we want it to be there because cutting the top of the mountain is going to make your uh, head think that the mountain is actually higher than it is so this is a great trick if you want to make a scene look bigger than it actually is in real life so here I want to talk about so if you take a wide shot here you can do it for our eyes it looks pretty good I always think that zooming in and getting more details is really going to help so that's why in a lot of the shots here, I just try zooming in, taking the details in uh, and just move around with your eyes when you're zoomed in, try and find something that looks good, a composition you like. Okay, I think I... Not the best shots on that side, but that's totally fine here. So with the kayak, it's a little bit hard taking pictures because you're always moving, so it's hard to get the perfect composition. But now I'm just going to leave the kayak, go back try to take a few more of this. It's a little bit cold, I haven't figured out the canal. Oh, there's a nice little dock in the front here. So moving along, there's some nice colors that are starting to reveal right there. Okay, this might not be as good as I would have hoped, but you don't know if you don't try. So I'm taking a little shot of the other side here. It's not as nice because the sun is uh, waking up on this side right here. Uh, so because of that, when you take pictures on that side, the colors don't show up as much inside of the mountains. They're very dark right now. So that's why I've been taking a lot more pictures uh, on the other side in the back right here. Um, but I actually want to come on the side here, explore a little bit more the mountains in the back here. Some, some, some pretty nice shots you can take from here uh, with the colors in the foreground and the mist in the background. So that's what I'm going to be trying to take right now is a few shots right here. So let's go with this. Yeah, so one thing I would say is that it's very important to always be aware of everything that is happening around. You want to be looking forward, backwards uh, to see what is happening because the conditions right now are changing so fast that you want to try and stay aware, as aware as possible when taking the shots. I just realized there's some water on the lens here, so let's clean that up. If you wonder why I haven't been taking more pictures using my phone, the big reason is that even though there's some light is starting to come out, it's still pretty low light right now. Uh, and my phone is struggling a bit more to take some pictures in these conditions. So for this, I just prefer using my DSLR because it's a safer choice to make sure that the pictures I'm taking are coming out uh, better. So if you look at what I'm doing right now, I simply take my lens. Um, it's pretty nice actually, I can take a wider shot right here. It's a good idea of taking one. I can even do a little panel here. A few shots together. Uh, but here what I do right now is really just zoom in and try and take some details with the fog and the different layers. So really just going with my lens, zooming as much as I can, trying to see different parts. If you're using your phone, you could just, uh, if you have a zoom on it, like this one, you just go on my four times zoom, and it's really just trying to find compositions. Uh, it's hard to see when you're looking at the whole scene what would look nice or not, so a lot of times it's just zooming in, looking around, and trying to see 
what could come out and look nice in a picture. One of the issues you have right now is that for the cameras, uh, especially my phone, they're thinking that the sky, or at least when they're exposing, uh, is perfectly white, where it's a little bit blue right now. Uh, so that's definitely one thing I'm going to have to correct afterwards when I'm going to edit these shots, uh, because you want to make sure that it's not totally white. Um, I'm not under exposing right now because I know I'm going to be able to recover it on my Sony, uh, but it's something you have to be careful. On my phone, it does seem to be coming out as pure white, uh, so it's something that I'm going to have to recover using a raw picture or something like that. So just keep that in mind when you're taking pictures in the conditions like right now. Okay, so we're going to go a little bit more towards the middle of the lake, change up our scene a little bit. Stop, 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 stop. Double checking my lens here, it's a little bit dirty because of sweat. Okay. I wanted to get the rock right there. Not the best shots, not exactly what I thought it would. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so here I'm just going to let me drift a little bit, slowly go forward. Okay, I really love the composition here with the rock in the foreground. The cottage that is peeking in the background. Uh, but the composition is not as great as I wanted to, so let's just slowly drift away and try and get a better composition here. But as you might have realized too, I take a lot of pictures. I know that's a problem for some people, but in the digital age, there's no reason not to take a lot of pictures, especially in a scene like right here where things change so quickly and you don't have a lot of time to be thinking and get the perfect composition or the perfect fog. So if you see something that's nice, take some pictures, take a few to make sure that you're not missing the focus or something like that, and just continue doing it. So uh, that's what I'm trying to do right now is just enjoy as much as possible I can this scene. Uh, I was just going to readjust my settings a little bit more. Another nice scene in front. Maybe not as nice as I thought, but again, take the shot, and if it's not good, you can just delete it later. Okay. So now I want to be quick. Some shots while I'm drifting forwards a little bit. Go for a nice wider shot. Oh, I think there's a nice wide shot here. Okay, let's switch back lens again. Uh, maybe just gonna get a last one here up in front here. I always like this view of the lake going to infinity. Uh, last little one here. I have to say, stop seeing a last little one. Okay, just double checking I don't have any dust on my sensor. Looks good. It is just a patch of light through the clouds, through the mist, I mean. Love this. So you have to be fast because these little scenes, they appear and they disappear really fast. So. so here, if you look in front, what is really nice is that uh, from the left side to the right side, there's some nice mist, but we're starting to see a little bit more the mountains too, and also the color of the... Um, clouds are actually pretty nice with the sunrise, so I want to see if I can take more pictures of that. Now we're wider left to right. 
Okay, so what I just tried to do is that it's kind of a V shape with the clouds going up because we have a nice reflection in the water at the bottom. Um, but what I tried to do is bring a little bit more of that darker side here just to compensate this brighter side on this side. Um, so that's why I moved a little bit more towards the left in this last shot. Not sure if it's the best one, but again, I don't really care if they're good shots or not right now. I'm just trying to take as many as possible and judge later. So right now what I'm really liking is that the right side here, we're getting some light that is hitting. So yeah, I was saying that there's some light that is hitting, so that reveals some of the colors through the fog right now. So I think that's a great, uh, some great shots here. So I'm just going to continue taking some because the conditions are changing really fast. A bit wider. So I think right now some wider shots, even though I've been talking about taking some long, uh, some zoom shots a lot, I think some wider shots right now make it a little bit better because you can see in the background the light is hitting in the mountain, then we have the fog in the middle, and then in the front we have the fog in the lake and also the trees here. So there's really a lot of layers when you're taking a wider shot in this case. Uh, and because of the fog, everything looks very simple, nice and natural. So I think here keeping it a little bit larger actually is to our advantage. So we can see, show a little bit more of what is happening right now and more of this scene. Look at this weird light that's coming out. So let's try and get a picture of that. Yeah, this is super weird. It's like if the lake was lighting up on fire today. Let's check with my phone. So I'm checking with my phone. Oops. Checking with my phone right here if it would be worth getting out the wedding lens. Take a little picture here. Yeah, the clouds are looking pretty nice, so I think it's going to be worth taking out right here. My wide angle lens again, so another lens switch. Oh no. Let me fix this. This lens is dirty. Okay, I think that looks good. Just in time for a nice wide angle photo. back up a little bit here I want to try and get the rock in my shot I really like the light that's hitting the trees in the background here it makes them very nice and saturated let's try and see if I can get some shots here let's turn it on a little bit more I'm being fast because this light really won't last long. So if I want to have a chance of getting some good shot, it's right now or never. Now we're talking. Let's switch lens again. So I'm really liking the colors here that are hitting the trees there. So let's kind of go and zoom in a little bit more.
Oh, birds. No, I missed them. So what I'm liking a lot right now is here is that there's a very dark part at the bottom here with the sun that is coming in. Then there's a lighter part and there's a fog in the top of the mountains here. So I think by zooming in right here and taking some shots of the mountain, you really get these different layers inside of here. And this is very interesting. So let's take a few more. Okay, so what is super weird right now is that usually when the light is coming out, the fog just disappears super quick. Uh, but it's actually not the case right now. I heard the loon. I want to get a picture of the loon, so I just heard him. So I'm probably going to try and see if he's coming by. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying is that usually the fog disappears really quick, which is not the case right now because I think it was really cold at night, so the water's probably colder. And it's going to be pretty warm today, so the temperature is rising, so it's creating even more fog. Um, so when you continue taking some pictures, it's going to be better because it's going to mean more light inside of the camera. So I'm not going to have to use uh, ISO as high for the pictures, which is great. Uh, but I'm actually starting to lose space on my memory card right here. And it'll have an extra memory card for my Insta360. So I'm going to start f stop filming the video and then put the pictures I took. Uh, and talk to you a little bit later to talk about the last few shots I got. So I just heard the loon again, I think it's somewhere over there. Uh, so we're quickly going to get there and try and see if we can get a few shots of him uh, before the fog completely disappears because the loon plus the fog plus the fog colors. This is a dream shot. Oh my god, I see the loon in front right here. So I'm actually going to switch lenses. I have a nice new long lens to take pictures of the loon. So we're slowly going to get closer to try and not scare him away. Uh, this is so exciting. Oh wow, he just got out of the water. Okay. Okay, he's right there. Wow. Wow. Wow, this is a good start. It's already good pictures and it's only my first shots of the loon. Okay, let's move closer. It's a little bit out of the bottom. The loons are usually pretty curious, so I'm not too scared of him going away, even if I get closer.
Wow, this was just amazing. So the loon just left. It stayed around me for about half an hour, 45 minutes. It was super curious, so I could get up close of uh, them. There was actually two of them that came along. Uh, it was also a great way of testing this new Tamron lens. I think it's 100 to 500 millimeters. Uh, so I could get some super close shots. That's the reason why I bought this lens was to be able to take some better shots of wildlife and some landscapes. So I'm really happy I was able to test this one out. So I'm gonna take a few last shots. Um, the fog is pretty much gone right now. So I'm gonna take a few shots, share them, and then it's gonna be time to wrap this video and go back inside afterwards. Okay, so I think it's time to call it a day. Uh, it was an amazing morning. I got so many great shots. I think if there's one thing I want you to remember is that even if you've already been to this location, I came so many times here to take some pictures during the fall, during foggy mornings, you should still go back out and try and take some more pictures uh, because the more pictures you take, the more chances you get of getting some better pictures. Then it's just a question of looking around. In mornings like this where the conditions change it really, really fast, I just try taking more pictures. I don't pass too much time stressing about if I had the perfect current position or things like that. I think that's important. Uh, so I think all uh, of these uh, allow you to take some better pictures in the end in these types of conditions. I hope these little tips uh, help you take some better pictures and I hope you can go also outside to take some more pictures. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting like button below and definitely subscribe for more content on photography and filmmaking. See you in the next one.